Income tax 2021-2022 software example. Business expenses tax. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into income tax 2021-2022. Lucert Tax Software, you don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want to have the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov, starting point, single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We've got the 100,000 flowing into the page one of the Form 1040 from the Schedule C. Let's look at that flow through process. Go into the Schedule C. We have the profit or loss from business. We've got the 120,000 gross, the 20,000 on the expenses to start off with the net the 100,000 then flowing in to schedule one schedule one additional income and adjustments to income there's the 100,000 the total of part one of schedule one flowing into the form 1040 on line number eight we're also going to have the self-employment taxes we've got to deal with we've got to deal with those on schedule se which is called the self-employment tax and so down below, we got the calculation of the 14129. Now 14129, then flowing into page number two or schedule two. And here it is there that also then flows into the 1040 page two. There's the 14129. We get half of that deducted. We could see that on the schedule SC where we take half of it right here. That flows then in to the schedule one into the schedule one page number two there's the 7065 that flows into page one of the form 1040 form 1040 there it is the above the line deduction or adjustment to income 100,000 minus the 7065 gives us to the 92 935 we got the 12,550 for the standard deduction we've got the 1677 we're allowing the software to calculate that's the qualified business income deduction form 8995 getting us to the taxable income of the 64308 mirroring that on our formula here 100,000 pulling in from the schedule C at the top line here's our schedule C income statement net flowing in to that line number one we're going to jump down to the tax line the other tax for that self-employment tax going on to the tax calculation that's going into the additional taxes where we're doing that calculation for us here we put together that fancy worksheet in a prior presentation if you want to check it out it's a good one it's a good one but that flows in here we get half of that as the above the line deduction you could see here that then we calculated on this schedule adjustments to income just taking half of the self-employment that flows into that first page to get us to the agi adjusted gross income 92,935. we got the 12,550 of the standard deduction the 1677 that we're pulling from the tax return relying on the return for that number and that gets us then to the same 64,308 taxable income. We see that amount here on page two. We've got the federal income tax relying on the software to do that calculation at the 9900. And then we calculated the other taxes. So the total tax currently at the 2430, 2430 matching almost here, 24. Uh, 29 off by a dollar that's the starting point we're okay with the dollar difference going back to the number page one so now we want to think about taxes that could be deductible on the schedule c so schedule c if it's ordinary and necessary we can deduct it taxes always complicate things because taxes are a complication just in in general and we have a whole lot of different types of taxes so first we have the federal income tax is the federal income tax deductible typically not why because you would think it's an ordinary necessary expense. So you'd think, well, it should be. But the, if I got this 100000 that is ultimately rolling through to the Form 1040, which is being used to calculate the federal income tax, which is going to be this actual 9900 can't I take part of that tax and allocate it to the Schedule C? Well, you can't really do that because we're using the Schedule C to calculate the 9900 tax. And if we got to deduct it, it would make a circle reference. So we can't use the tax deduction to calculate the tax diff typically because that would be confusing. On the state tax side of things, if it's a state tax which is on the net income, then generally you might not be able to deduct the state tax as well if you have, if you have a deduction for the state tax of the gross 
as uh, distinguished from the net income directly attributable to the business, then possibly in that instance, you could deduct it. And that would be dependent on the state and local taxes. And you would probably be well aware if you're in a state that's taxing you on <clears throat> on the gross receipts as well. So those are going to be the income taxes. And then we have the payroll taxes. So if I go on to the Schedule C, note that we have to distinguish the payroll taxes from the taxes on our self-employment. So this 100,000 at this point in time, the 100,000, we are then treated as kind of our employee and employer of our own business based on that net income being subject to the similar thing as payroll taxes, which is Social Security and Medicare, which is being calculated on the Schedule SE. So notice these rates are basically the employee and employer portion in essence that were calculated that 14,129 that is not the the income tax but is the self-employment tax and then half of it is being deducted. This is different than payroll taxes even though it's kind of like we are being treated as the employee of our own business and being subject to the self-employment tax or at least with regards to self-employment tax. If we hired somebody else then we would have wages. So if we had wages here, we would have to be dealing with Social Security and Medicare as well with regards to what we pay the employees. Now, in that case, we would have something that would be reported here most likely and possibly also reported in the taxes area. So for example, if I jump into the data input here for the wages on a Schedule C, we might have wages, let's say, of the 10000 and then we might pay, let's say 10,000, and then we might pay taxes, which are payroll taxes, which we might break out. Let's just take a look at the calculation, which it might look like. If I was to say, pull out the trustee calculator and say that we had, let's call this social security, 10,000 times 0 0.062, that would just be our portion of it, 620. And then this would be Medicare, let's call it MED, which would be the 10,000 10, times 0 0.0145, which would be the 145. Now, this is what it would often look like basically on the tax forms for other people's wages, right? You got the payroll taxes here. So if I put that into my form, I've got my taxes here and my wages that we paid here. So note that I'm still calculating Social Security and Medicare, but I'm not calculating it on my own wages because I don't pay myself in a Schedule C. I'm not going to be an employee of my own business. That's different than if I was another type of entity, possibly like an S corporation, a flow through entity, where I would possibly have myself on as paying myself in essence and be subject to self employment tax 35. And I'm paying payroll taxes, not on that net. The payroll taxes are being paid on the employee, uh, on the employee wages of the 10,000 and notice up here, I'm only breaking out the portion of the payroll taxes that are my portion that I have to pay. In other words, the withholding for the payroll taxes would also include social security and Medicare. I'm not breaking them out, but including those in the $10,000 that I paid to the employees because in theory, they got the $10,000 and then they paid their own payroll taxes but in practice, what actually happened is they didn't get the $10,000. I took from them their portion of payroll taxes, paid it to the government. I get the deduction for their portion of payroll taxes, but it's not my tax. It's their tax. Therefore, we record it as wages here. And then we record the taxes, our portion of the taxes kind of up top. So those, those are a little bit confusing to keep separate. You also might check this these numbers and compare them to your payroll reports, which would be the quarterly 941 reports, possibly the 940 at the end of the year for the federal unemployment tax and the W-2 and W-3 form. As you do that, you wanna keep this distinct in your mind that you have the this number, if it's broken out, is just gonna be the employer portion of the payroll taxes and this number is going to be including the the wages and the withholdings, including the withholdings that uh, that they paid so, so we've got those uh, payroll taxes, and then we could also the self-employment tax. Now, the self-employment tax, we talked about the calculation of the self-employment tax here, the 12,000, in this case, now it's now at 12,609. That, of course, is being charged to us. If I go to the 1040 page number two, 
we've got then the self-employment tax now at the 12609 but we get to deduct half of it. And this gets a little confusing too. Why do you get to deduct half of it? They're trying to mirror what would happen in a normal corporation so that the, so that the sole proprietorship is not disadvantaged from being a sole proprietor as opposed to basically a corporation, right? And so, so what the corporation gets to deduct, as you can see here, is if they were an employee situation and notice in a corporation, even the high paid executives are, are gonna be, you know, the employees of the corporation getting payroll in essence. So in that case, you would, the corporation as a separate legal entity paying its own taxes would then be deducting the wages here that they would be paying and then they would be deducting the taxes. If you're charging me as a sole proprietor taxes on my net income here, the 89 to 235 in this case, then they want to charge me both the employer and employee portion. So that means when I when we calculate the tax, you can see it's it's double here what it was for the Social Security and Medicare if you were talking about just the employee or just the employer portion because we are in essence paying both portions of it. So I should be able to de deduct you know half of that uh, as I would like the employer portion of of the employer portion of the tax, which you would which you could see kind of mirrored here for our employees. But I can't deduct my portion of the of the self-employment tax on the Schedule C because I used the net income in order to calculate the self-employment tax. And I'd get a circle reference if I did that. So I have to record it. They put it up here on the Schedule 1, page 2. So the self-employment tax is something that is is half of it. We get to deduct it but it's a little confusing because we can't deduct it on the Schedule C. That's why taxes confuse things. We got to deduct it over here on the Schedule 1, which pulls over to the page 1 of uh, the, the Form 1040. So it's business related, but it's somewhere other than the Schedule C. Now, then you have the real estate taxes. Real estate taxes, if it's going to be real estate tax on a building that, you, that is just for business and you own it, and you're paying taxes on it, for example, or equipment that is just for the business, well, that's pretty straightforward. You, you would be able to deduct the real estate taxes because it's business related generally. Uh, and I mean, you also, so, but then if you were to have like your home, like possibly you have a home and you have real estate taxes on the home, the property taxes, then you would, you would main, maybe be filling out a business use of the home, which would look something like this. You would have to allocate. We might talk more about this later, but the general idea is now you've got taxes that are split up between the business and the, and the personal. So you might allocate uh, to the business, the business portion, which would look something like this. And again, we won't go into detail here, but just the general idea, you'd have to use some kind of ratio. So, so possibly you would be saying, that my office is 500 uh, area versus the, the home has 1200 square feet. And that's what we can use to do our ratio calculation. So that means the amount of the property taxes that we're going to be applying, you would think would be 500 divided by 1200 or 41.66%. If the real estate taxes were 10,000, then we can allocate possibly a portion to uh, the business in, in, in this format. So now we're going to say down here, we've got the, we've got the expenses for business use of your home. Did not report these expenses uh, elsewhere. Attach the 8829 unless using the simplified method. And we've got the calculation of the 4167. Here's the form 8829, which has our ratio. There's the 4166 we just took a look at. Here's the 10,000 and we're taking the the amount of the 4167 so you, so again you oftentimes if if you have that kind of breakout between a business and personal you've got to figure out how much is business related now if you were able to deduct on the schedule a then possibly the rest could be deducted on the schedule a here but we don't have a schedule a at this point because we're below the threshold if we were above the threshold of the standard deduction we might be able to allocate some of it to the schedule a let's just take a look at what that looks like if I was to say that I want the deductions opening the Schedule A, the thing that usually puts us over is the interest that we would pay and the property taxes and the state taxes combined usually. Let's say this was, let's say this was 15,000 of interest just to put us over. So now we've got the Schedule A, the Schedule A at the 15,000 
and we've got the property taxes, state and real estate taxes of the 5833. So now of the 10,000 taxes we paid, we've, we're deducting 5833 here and the other side on the Schedule C plus the 4167, there's the 10,000. So that gets a little bit confusing to kind of make to kind of make those breakouts, but the general idea is of course that if it's if it's business related, you would typically get the deduction here on the Schedule C, and if there's some crossover between business and personal, you might be able to get the business related item do some kind of allocation here, and then if it's the home use, then you might have to use that home office uh, item which we might dive into in more detail in a future presentation. Then we've got the sales tax information. Now, when we're buying stuff with sales tax, usually it's gonna be a fairly straightforward type of thing on the purchasing side of things. If I purchase something and I'm charged sales tax, which in the United States is typically charged on the state and local level, if I purchased something like supplies, for example, and I paid $100 for supplies and $5 for sales tax or whatever, then I, would, I wouldn't put $100 in, in supplies and $5 in taxes. I would just report the supplies at $105. I would be able to deduct the taxes related to the items I had here on the Schedule C. Now, you got to be a little bit careful because on the Schedule A, you'll recall, you can deduct the taxes for your state, your state taxes. And then if you have the sales tax, you might have the sales tax calculation here, which you could use a method to have the sales tax so it depends what state you're in so but you can't really double up this tax the sales tax in that way in other words if you if you had something that you deducted for sales taxes over here then it would be a business related item right and so we'd have the the sales tax here if you purchased something like a piece of equipment then the piece of equipment that you purchased that you paid sales tax on would go on the books as an asset and you would include the sales tax as the asset, you would get the benefit from it eventually because it's a business asset in the form of depreciation. So then you would expense it in the form of depreciation, the basis or cost of the item being depreciated over time, and you would get the expense flowing through here uh, as that happens. If you purchase inventory, then you would, you would include the sales tax that you paid for the thing that you're going to sell, the inventory item, on the books as an asset, which you can't see here because this is just the income statement. But then when you sell the asset, you would record it. It would be part or included in the expense up here of the cost of goods sold. And then there's the sales tax that you pay to the government. So if you pay sales tax to the government, then you don't get to deduct the sales tax as an expense because you never included the 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 item that you received in revenue so for example this 120,000 if i was subject to sales tax on it of 5% i might have actually collected 120,000 times 0.05% another 6,000 for a total of of 126,000 that's what i might have collected but i'm not recording in income 126,000 because that 6,000 in theory, isn't something that I actually charged. The government used me as the tax collector. They forced me to be the tax collector. So what the government wants us to do then is to say, I'm not going to record the 126, even though that's what I received. I'm only going to record the 120. The 6,000, when I receive it, is going to go on the books as a liability. And then when I pay the, pay the government that 6,000 that I collected on their behalf, I just reduced the liability. Therefore, neither the income nor the expense is going to be on the books. You can imagine a situation where I record the 126,000 as revenue and then 6,000 as an expense to get to the same net down below with the net amount, right? Would be the same. But that's not what the government wants us to do. They want us to record the 120,000 not including the amount that they made us collect for them on the sales tax. And then when, then when I pay the government, I don't get to deduct the expense because I didn't include the receipt of the funds in the revenue, neither the income nor the expense is included in the income statement, which is basically what the Schedule C is. So taxes get a little bit confusing, of course, because taxes really complicate things way more than they would be otherwise, but they're the necessary 
the necessary thing that uh, we got to deal with. That's what we're dealing with, the complications here. So it's good times.